here is part two of the tutorial. I split it up into two because I wanted the core to be in one section and then a bunch of fun exploration of this technique to be in a second part. A little bit of an experiment. If you like this, please put a comment, say if you like it. You don't let me know as well. It's, you know, just an experiment in making tutorials. So why don't we jump into Cinema 4D and just begin making some fun variations and explorations of different things that this technique might allow you to do. Picking up directly where we left off last time, here is our text and we are ready to make any changes that we need to. Now, something to keep in mind right away is that we can at any point change this. I grab both of the mo texts, change the letter to whatever we want it to be. Let's do like the number eight, not terribly different, but it should automatically propagate, go through. I don't know if the hair will update accurately, so I'm just gonna click on regrow. But now this is a new setup here. If we frame forward, frame back, it should refresh and hit play and it should be on the new text. I like the ampersand, so we will keep it that way, but I just want to throw out there that you can make that change. In addition, I mean, I'm kind of making this up as I go, but keep in mind that we're throwing text in here, but this could be anything. You can jump inside the content browser and grab an elephant, grab the dog, just throw it in. And I think you just swap that mesh out directly for, you know, the Motex directly in these builders and all the same settings should continue to work. So this really opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, uh, the first thing I think I would like to do here for continuing is let's, uh, let's make two new materials. I'm going to change the gold to be silver. So under this material, under reflectance, change this preset from gold to something shiny like silver. And let's make it super shiny. Get rid of all the blur. No, maybe let's make it very blurry. Yeah, there we go. Why not? And then I'm going to also make a new material here just in vanilla cinema. And this is just mostly for the viewport, but let's get rid of reflectance Do a bunch of let's make a bright greenish color and turn on luminance and put on a yellowish color. Not all the way, though. There we go. Just something a little bit glowy. And here's a thought. Copy the volume deform. Just call this volume deform two. Swap out the material. And keep in mind, this isn't generating too much more information because it's just referencing the original stuff again. And it's just a plane deformer making changes. So if we were to hit play, we have two of the exact same mesh doing the exact same thing. It's not going to look like too much, but I'm going to let this pre-roll just a little bit so that everything kind of settles in. It's going to be alternating between these two meshes because they're both occupying the exact same space. But I just want to see these lines a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of time to settle in. I'm not sure how many frames it'll take, but shouldn't be too bad. And here is the thought. As this settles in, actually, this starting to look pretty good. So let's stop it here. Why don't we make it so that everywhere that is getting pushed in right now, let's say that there's like a counter little shape that's filling in the gaps. And that's what this one will be. So if we were to just turn off this deformer, you see it's going to, I think it should just kind of eat up the entire space. Inside the volume builder, let's also erode this one a little bit, create another dilate and erode, shrink it down, not too much, negative one should be enough. And that should shrink it in, well, okay, not quite enough, negative two negative three it looks like the radius on the other one was quite a bit by shrinking it this much now we can see that this is partially down from the surface of the other one which right away that's looking pretty cool i like that but with our plane deformer it's doing the same stuff as the other one if we were to turn that on it's going to deform that in inward instead let's make that one negative radius it's currently negative five so let's do positive five and it's going to inflate that out. It's inflating it out quite a bit, but I think if we were going to our radius and start shrinking this, we can shrink that further and further and further. And there we go. Now that's starting to be a little bit of kind of like this worm shape on top of it in between the lines. At a glance, I think maybe this uh, five is too strong. Try three, try two. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of definition on that. And honestly, probably some reflection. So let's turn out some reflectance and that should make that... Uh, a little bit shinier actually yeah let's make it uh well that's specular which i think should show up yeah there's those highlights are showing up let's make it a little bit well yeah there we go now you can see those popping out uh but of course we can turn on some reflection as well but i like that contrast right now maybe not quite as high and yeah so instantly really cool additional effect and all we had to do was copy this mesh deformer and we're getting a completely new look in addition to that we are not we don't have to limit ourselves to a single type of hair here so one thought is what if we 
make there not be quite so many hairs here. Let's say 60. So we'll cut the hair count down. We can make the hairs visible if we want to. So fewer hairs. Rewind. And let's create a copy of the hair. So an entire copy of it. I'm going to rename this one hair short. So this should hopefully be some short hair. Here's my thought. Let's make a bunch of tiny little hair. So we'll make a length of one, very small, segments of one. So almost, you know, as minimal as possible. And we can probably make a lot of these. I'm going to set them up to, let's say, 300. I want a different seed on here. So under, I think it's advanced, we can click on the seed and type in some random new number. And then let's click on guides and regrow. We're not seeing them here, but that's probably because they're inside this mesh right now. We have nice long hairs we can see very clearly. But if we do that, now you see, oh, okay, we've got all these tiny little ones inside the surface. So, okay, interesting right out of the gate. Uh, I'm going to turn off our green goo here. Oops. Clean up, you know, turn off the green goo. And I'm going to temporarily swap out inside of our plane deformer under the fall off. Let's swap it out for the short hair. So we should just be seeing the result of that. Now you see all these tiny little ones. Currently, they're all still inside the surface, so they haven't gotten the poke out. So hopefully, based on the radius, those will poke out. And now you see we've got all these tiny little ones. Keep in mind these secondary hairs, which we can probably just turn off and not calculate. Now we just have all these really tiny ones, and these are going to flow around. Keep in mind, we could do the same thing with a sphere, a, a cloner with a bunch of spheres inside of it. That would also work. But, you know, this is just continuing on the same rig and we can make changes very, very easily. So we can see all of these flowing around and actually a very nice refresh here. So I'm digging that. We should control the radius of this very specifically. So I'm thinking, why don't we create a duplicate of hair short and I'm going to drag in the other hair as well. So we have both. And turn that one off just so we have, you know, I didn't want to lose any of those settings. So we're seeing this one in the viewport. The radius is perhaps a little bit large. So we'll drop it down one, drop it down another. So these are becoming smaller. So there's more of a distance between them. Um, I wonder if we can increase the resolution again. It, at a certain point, it's going to be like too much. But currently at 1.5, let's drop it down to one. Dropping it down to one. There we go. Look how nice and crisp that becomes. Of course... This is a, a danger we have to keep in mind. When we change the subdivisions, it dramatically changes the way the smoothing looks. So in this case, we should take a quick peek at the dynamic mesh and see how well we're blending with that one. So if we look at the dynamic mesh, it's actually we're not even showing up very well at all. In fact, how's the best way to what is the best way to see this? Um, probably just clicking on the volume builder here and increasing the smooth more and more. And I mean, it's smoothing it out more, but I still am not seeing that. Oh, we, we, we shrunk that inner mesh. So we should turn off this dilate for a moment. There we go. Now we can see it. And you can see that we're not quite matching the rounding there. So in the volume builder, I might put a second iteration. And there we go. Now it's finally starting to smooth out to the extent. And that's just because we kept on increasing the voxel size. So this is a variable, a third one. And now you can see that's actually sneaking aside. And we can probably do a percentage of this it's going to take a while to refresh one on the initial one but after we've done that initial one i think it'll just cleanly work excellent so now that that's all working dilate it and shrink it down again and yeah that should be matching a lot better so we should be getting better resolution on that and we've got our high poly one back once again pure exploration we're just having fun with this i don't have too much of a plan we're just going to see where we can end up by making these uh these different shapes now we did just change a bunch of settings inside this so i am actually inclined to create a copy of the initial one again the silver one rename it and just rename that to steal the green color and possibly steal the deformer from it so we'll get rid of that plain deformer and steal the one that we we're moving turn it on nice all right, so though that should be updated and it should be doing a different deformation on it. Yeah, they should be pretty much identical. And this is actually referencing only the original hair. So it's not doing anything right now because it's only referencing the original one. Mm, here's my thought. What if, well, first of all, we have to erode this one. We're repeating that step again. Erode. And it's inflating right now. Let's say minus two. And there we go. It's small enough where we're barely seeing a couple little bumps in there. Um, what if we only erode it a little bit and let's feed it the bumps as well. I mean, that's getting a weird tryptophobia type of thing. Uh, looks cool though. The metallic and green helps make it not too gross, but 
Um, currently, this deformer is not seeing the short hairs at all. So we could make it see the short hairs. Let's drag in the short hairs. And you're going to see it's going to be inflating kind of crazy all over the place. But that's, once again, because this is set to a long. Set that to a radius. And now it's seeing the radius and bulging outward. Let's set the radius down to something small like 5. And now we're getting these cool bubbles. Actually, I'm kind of digging that. Drop that down to 3. Yeah, it's 3 and... Just increase the uh, amount it's pushing out. And now look at these nice little like blobs bulging out from that point. I'm not sure how far down we can push this radius, but that is, yeah, that's looking kind of neat. I like that. And let's see how well it's playing back here. Let's give ourselves a couple extra frames. 999. Hit play. And actually, yeah, not bad in the playback. Like I said, these deformations of these volumes are not too bad because those calculations are simple. The complex calculations are actually the dynamic ones, but this doesn't care about the dynamics. It just is the final geometry. So that I don't think slowed us down pretty much at all. So now we've got all these wonderful little dots driving around doing all these weird effects. And we can just make as many of those as we want. Keep in mind, it's still a three-dimensional object. So these are moving all over the place and uh, just really cool, really neat. A uh, lot of fun to start merging these things together. So... That's looking really nice. I, I'm enjoying that. What if we add in to the original one, the silver one, in the plane deformer, turn on the original hair again, and if we turn on that hair and turn on the volume version of it, how do these combine? Now, it's going to look weird in the beginning because the you know these are just sticking straight out from the surface, but let's rewind, and we'll have to give it a few frames for them to catch up. It might look a little bit crazy in the beginning, but let's give it some time to settle and uh, something I'm seeing right away is that these seem to be kind of obliterating everything. And it's likely because our radius is quite large on that. So I'm gonna shrink it down to two and now we can see them again. But you can see how our small hairs are not showing up. And that's because I think this upper level is overriding the one underneath it. So we can add these together. So if I say add, then now we get both sets of bumps on both sides. So we can see the larger line version and then we can see the smaller little bump version. We can control the radius. We can control how far in they're pushing or out they're pushing. That could be fun. Let's click on this hair and say that... Actually, no, it's only a single deformer, so we can't push in and out at the same time on both. But we could separate those. But what I'm thinking is let's make it so that the slime doesn't show up on these long lines. It only shows up on the little bumps. And the way we might do that is inside of the plane deformer, inside of the green one, the slime one. That also is seeing the short hairs make it not affect color because it doesn't make sure that they're added together and now yeah, they, they are named properly so we can tell that this one is the shorter hairs currently those are oozing out just in the same way but i'm thinking what i guess we have to make a second deformer now i think about it if i make a second deformer one of these can be the short hair delete so that's just the short hair and this one can be the long hair why don't we rename it long hair just a little bit of clarity so two different deformers. The second deformer is based on the long hairs and it's got its own radius, working well. Under parameter, it's pushing out four. But what if we said, actually, you should be pushing in negative four. So the slime on the silver lines is not pushing out, it's pushing in, thus erasing it out from the visibility there because those actually are disappearing inside. If we hide the hairs, we should just see our final geometry hit play and let these refresh properly. And now we can see two different effects essentially going on at the exact same time. Complete control over the way those are moving. Currently, turbulence is just letting them blow around slowly, but still pretty cool looking. If we want to separate out the effect of these little dots and the bigger ones, we could do the same idea. Duplicate the deformer on this one. It'll see um, just the short hairs, delete the other. And on this one, it'll see just the long hairs delete the other. So the second deformer is only seeing the long hairs, in which case the parameter can go positive. So those lines could push outward and those can become, you know, little spikes and or lines on the edge, increase the radius even. Yeah, definitely. On the long hair layer radius, set that to three. Yeah, that's going to round those out. Oh, I like that. And now we get all these nice little spikes where the hairs haven't quite settled in yet. And they are all going to be moving around while we get these little bumps as well. The ratio of this is way off, I think. Let's go and decrease the number of long hairs 
down to, I don't know, these are pretty long, so I'm going to drop it down to 20, so one third of them. We need a lot more of the short hairs, so jump it up to 900, so there's a lot of those. It's going to need a few frames to settle in, but hit play. And now you can see we get a bunch of the little dots. And then after a couple frames, we should get the larger ones starting to settle in. We can take a look at you know, where they're falling in. Those are the small ones. Here's the large ones. We can see the spline starting to reach the surface. And those are still pushing away the other tiny splines. So we still have control over that. And you can see like just the, the I don't know, this kind of weird techie madness happening, layering up. And man, it's just so weird and fun. We have so much control over this. Now you can see right up there, these are getting pushed away pretty far from the surface. And that's probably, uh, we, we have a lot of push and pull here. We have a lot of control over what's going to happen. So the field force is currently pulling everything to the surface, but we have a turbulence that's pushing everything away from the surface. And if the turbulence is too strong, they'll just kind of float away and get, they can get shoved by the other, the other splines. But if we grab our field force and say, yes, but we want these all pulling in a lot stronger, and I don't want to go overboard. I'm going to triple the strength. I think we should see, yeah, you see immediately these are starting to try and fight their way back in again. And it should spread everything out a little bit more. So we have a lot of different push and pull controls here, kind of all over the place. And man, I, I even in my tests, I didn't make anything that looked quite like this. And it's pretty neat. Um, so let's keep moving forward with some experimental things that could make for some really fun and weird end results. Uh, the next thought here is currently we are generating these hairs based on the geometry that we're feeding in. It's based on the low poly mesh, but it doesn't have to be. So what if we were to create a sphere and I'm just going to eyeball this, move it kind of centered on our text here. T for scale, make it a little bit bigger and we don't need to visibly see it. And what if the hairs were not being created on the surface of the text? on the text, but on the surface of the sphere. So I'm gonna click hair long and short. It is cloning onto not the volume, but onto a sphere, regrow. And now you can see that we've got this sphere of all of them on the outside and nothing inside of the object. You see, they're all floating all over the place. So they're all pretty far away. I don't know how long this will take, but let's hit play. They are still affected via forces to be attracted to the surface of this object. So you can see that they're suddenly going to come from someplace else and very powerfully they're snapped onto that surface and already like neat i like that that's cool um i'm thinking maybe let's straighten these lines out a little bit they're very curvy we can do that just by clicking long hair soft body and increasing our flexion i don't want to go overboard i'll jump it up to eight those should straighten out quite a bit it refreshing the viewport but i think if we want one frame forward it'll probably pop back in yep those will start trying to settle themselves out and we got all these, oh man, these are looking so good. Um, I'm going to calm down how far they're pushing out. So I think that's this one. And yeah, this is pushing out a lot. You say only go two. Actually, we can maybe even just go one. Yeah, so just a little little bit of a pop right there. Um, these lines are looking good. I'm thinking, what if we made them longer? So I'm going to double. Should we double? Yeah, let's double the length, which means we should double the number of segments. Or we could increase the radius. That is also an option. That would be interesting. Um, so we have increased the segments, but if we leave the segments in half, that means we can double the radius. That Just keep in mind that equation we talked about earlier. So and now I can double that value. And if we double that value, that should give these some space to breathe. They're going to force all the other little dots away. Keep in mind, we're not going to see in the viewport right away. We have to hit play. I mean, actually, we probably could hit play right now and they will continue to resolve themselves. Um, now, a couple things. These have a larger radius, so they immediately are shoving their way away from the surface, which probably means that they need uh, a different radius on their line. I'm not entirely sure. They don't seem to be matching very well, so I might rewind and let those calculate again from scratch. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to rewind, and we'll let that run again. Once again, we're just exploring and having fun and seeing a lot of the possibilities that this technique is this technique offers. And I really like this being on the sphere outside of everything. So all of these long ones are getting pulled in and you can see some on the surface very quickly. And you can see how they have this larger radius, which is keeping everything further away from them in general. Yeah, this is not allowed to get too close to it. Now that's pushing out quite a bit. I might want to, let's click on the long hairs. Uh, let's see, what am I thinking here? What if 
the deformer of the long hairs, which is this one. That's how far they're pushing out. It's pushing out a lot. So let's push them out, not quite so much. Calm them down. Increase the radius of it. I don't know, let's say five. Yeah, those get a little bit more calm. Yeah, look at, oh, look how nice that looks. Um, I'm going to just keep on like changing some colors around just for, you know, keeping this a little bit more lively. What should we go to? Let's go to a nice uh, bright blue on top of that. Yeah, there we go. And let's make it a copper color. Like I said, I'm going to keep this kind of metallic looking because I don't want it to start looking gross and organic. So that's an intentional choice that I'm making. But if you want to make it look gross, it should be pretty easy to make it look gross. All right. So a uh, slightly new look there. What is something else we could do? Well, uh, these are all moving very quickly. They're moving very quickly because we have a turbulence and we have a very strong field force. If we calm the field force back down again, let's go back to 55. We could probably make it relatively low as long as the field force isn't too strong. Or as, I'm sorry, as long as our turbulence isn't very strong. In fact, why don't we temporarily just turn off the turbulence entirely and see how quickly these are moving now. When I rewind, frame forward, rewind again, let's hit play, and let's see how quickly these move in. You can see they're a lot slower. They're still, they're still pretty quick. Keep in mind we're only seeing frame, 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 but they're a lot slower than they used to be, and that's based on the overall attraction. So these are going to eat up the space. The dynamics are pushing everything away from each other. So that's looking, I mean, they're, they're flowing around the surface very well, but without any turbulence, I think that these will all just kind of push everything else away. And as they push everything else away, then it's going to fill up the spacing very well. And yeah, we're going to get these crazy alien looking shapes. So pretty neat. Now, uh, the radius on these big ones is so big that there's actually, you see there's the close lines and these far away ones. We can largely ignore those far away ones. Although I do kind of want to sweep those because those would be pretty cool to be seeing that geometry twirling around here as well. I'm not going to because that's not the point of this tutorial, but would be neat. Um, so what am I thinking now? Well, they're still moving really quick. We could keep on decreasing our field force so that this doesn't have to be very strong. So, you know, if we were to set that down to five, these should be pretty calm. They're still going to accelerate, but we should see these move in a lot more slowly. They're going to be calm in the way that they move in. And there's no turbulence. A couple of them are colliding. So you can see those kind of flipping off and moving a little bit, but everything's moving in and a lot calmer of a rate. Now, everything is spaced very evenly, but I do like that this will not be as nuts as, as a, of a like, boom, they're all there. They should, they should, you know, ease in just a little bit more. Not a lot more, but a little bit more. So that is one thought that we can ease them in via a weaker field force. But I'm also thinking that we could use some friction. So it's a good, uh, I've tinkered around with a couple of the different settings inside of Dynamics, things like drag and linear damping. It doesn't work as well as I was hoping it would, but when in doubt, you can always use a simulation friction. And this friction uh, is pretty powerful. I'd go easy on it. Somewhere between zero and 100 is a pretty good number. I'll set it to 50, keeping in mind that our field force is pretty weak right now. So let's hit play. And yeah, you can see everything is being forced to move a lot more slowly. Now that's fine, except everything's a little bit far away from our overall shape right now. So it's going to take quite a few frames before it gets there. So we have the option at any even point of making sure that our shape is more carefully, more closely encapsulating this. So I could shrink this and everything's going to be closer. So some will catch up quicker, but I propose to you, what if we take our sphere and we move it somewhere else? Let's say we move our sphere, which is creating all of our lines. What if we move this way over? And currently we have some hairs that are like sticking right through this. Um, that could be fine. I don't actually want them to be actively intersecting with anything. But if I move into the proper spot, yeah, maybe we can make that not quite look like it's catching. And we can also randomize the seed. And I think I will. Let's just randomize the seed of the long hair. So under gen, nope, 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 uh, advanced. Let's just type in some other new number, guides, regrow. And now you can see we got a different one and these just, just happen not to be hitting it. So I kind of lucked out there. And we can move our sphere as close as we want to just so that they more quickly will get there. And you can see nothing is affecting this in the very beginning. So I don't know how this will look, but I'm going to turn, let's visibly hide the short hairs and the long hairs. 
increase the friction a little bit more, let's say 75. The copper, this copper is not looking as nice as I want. I think it's just not matching with the HDR very well. Uh, I guess we could fake it by adding a little bit more orange. Uh, yeah, it's you know actually it's looking kind of chocolatey orange, but let's just leave it like this. And now we're not seeing anything except for the final effect. And let's render that to the picture viewer because I think this will take a little bit to catch up and it'll be a lot cooler to see it uh, just you know in real time. All right, that's about four and a half minutes of calculation there. Let's take a look at this in real time. It took it took like 100 frames before they get there, so I was a little bit far back. But let's see. They do get there. Oh, man, look at that. That's so gross in the best way possible. You get all these little things. Now, there's no turbulence here. Keep in mind, this is just like the ones in the back pushing the ones forward. So this is kind of being forced forward. Now, because we moved the entire sphere behind the object, that's now the source of them. They're all slowly moving forward from there. So being able to create the source of this is huge. Look at the way these like creep over the side. We could also run this in reverse and let them fall. The possibilities are insane on this. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to end up making this one, but we could slowly keyframe a lot a little bit of gravity on and gravity will slowly pull these down but they'll still be attracted to the surface and they'll pull down i kind of wish i had um a little bit of turbulence turned on here because everything's moving very gently and it would be can, been kind of nice to uh see more movement here and then some of the lines they seem to have gotten the the big long line seem to have gotten trapped in the back and they can't make, work their way to the front because all these little ones are blocking it but you see a couple of them starting to sneak their way around like right there and right there some of the big ones are starting to sneak through but we can't let that run forever so let's keep on doing some more tests and just having some more fun with this turn kill that one and what should we do now i'm thinking temporarily let's turn off our secondary blue one we don't need that and let's get rid of the short ones. We don't need any short hairs currently. What we would like is a lot more of the long ones. So let's set it up to 100. And currently everything's cloning onto this sphere. And it's kind of nice where there's a lot of separation with them. They can be going way back, but we can clone that onto any object that we want, of course. So creating a plane, laying that on Z, moving this up just beyond our object. Feed, I'm going to feed the long and short into the plane and regrow. And all of them are growing outward there. And I can very precisely place this wherever I want to. Very close here. So just far enough away so that we're not getting any of the effect sneaking through. And if I want to be really specific, maybe these sh this should be smaller. So 200 by 200. View it from here. Move it right around there. Now all the hairs should be generating from behind it and then they'll sneak up around it at least that's the plan i don't know how well it will work so let's just hit play and i don't let's see how long that takes hopefully not too long a couple of those are on top of each other oh also keep in mind our friction is very high so especially if we're checking this out in the viewport i'm going to lower the friction way down to like 15 that should let these move significantly faster and then we can see them start curving in now keep in mind that we could render those hairs you know, they are just splines, but mostly pay attention to what's happening on the surface here. And you can see these lines are starting to creep in from the edges, not from everywhere. And given a little bit of time, given enough time, they should sneak their way all the way around because they're pushing apart from each other just because they can't collide. And they're all attracted to the surface very weakly, mind you. But they should be trying to travel around. Actually, now that I think about it, because we added more stiffness, it could be that they're, they can't quite make these harsh turns so actually, that might have been why we didn't see too much of them before, because they're kind of flowing around, but not they can't too powerfully bend here. So we could either increase or decrease their uh, flexion, or we can increase the strength here. And just because it'll be faster, I'm going to increase the strength here. And by faster, I mean, you know, each frame, they're going to be more attracted. So that's going to be a more of a brute force solution. But as far as we're viewing this in the viewport, it should kind of translate to seeing more of an effect more quickly. Now, by offloading these hairs and not being part of the surface, they're not intersecting with the surface. So they're a lot more free to, you know, kind of not explode or shoot out or have those tiny little dot lines where they begin before they fall over. And now it's going to curve and try and travel around the overall surface here. So pretty neat along those lines. As yeah, some of the lines are being able to get closer. And of course, we did set the radius. There's, oh man, there's so many different variables here. We set the radius really far down. Or I'm sorry, we cranked the radius up. 
to 5. But if we shrink that back down to 2.5, this should be able to get a lot closer to the surface. And these should in instantly, yeah, instantly see these are going to get a lot more attractive surface. And I think, yeah, a lot more appealing looking version of it. And look at the look at the way these lines are layering up and naturally following a flow from where the other ones are. Like, ah, oh, it's just so good. Um, now, I don't think we need nearly this many. Or we can cut the length in half. I think cutting the length in half is probably a good idea. So I'm going to change the hair length. And you see I'm actually being uh, pretty risky here by making changes not at the time of zero with dynamics. But because we can just do this regrow, like force refresh. And actually it did a really good job of actually it's still figuring itself out. But it seems to have actually cut the hairs down to half length. And it's continuing the calculation. I'm impressed. Good job, Cinema. Uh, even here in the viewport, it looks great. I have these dashed lines and these floating around, filling up the overall space. Like, ah, so good. Now, I mean, uh, we're going to be wrapping this up soon. I just want to talk about some of these different effects, but let's push things a little bit further. We have just barely used some of the options that we have when it comes to field forces. So here's a thought. What if we create some sort of flow direction? So here's my thought. If we were to create a circle, hit T for scale, scale it down, and move it along this, you know, kind of around one of the holes here, then we could say that we want this to travel around in the circle. Now, we could dra drag this directly into the field force, but I'm just going to save us some time because the better workflow is to create a connect object, drop the circle into the connect, and even rename this, you know, splines or whatever we wanted to. And now we'll feed that connect into the field force, and that will save us a lot of time in a moment. So dragging in the splines, once again, by default, yeah, I want to bring it as a spline object. Thank you, Cinema, for asking. It's going to bring it in as a long, but we want it to be a radius. So there's a... Actually, no, 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 no. I almost messed this up. Um, let's slow down because what we should do is look at our display. Let's turn our display back on, and now we're seeing this. Dragging in the splines, it is currently set to radius. I actually do want it to be a long. A long is good this time. And you can see, especially if I zoom out, you can see how this is traveling kind of in the circle. It's not fully a circle because we need to either increase our offset all the way, and you see it's a full circle, or perhaps a little more cleanly under remapping to full strength there. Actually, you see it actually doesn't complete that. So you know what? I take it back. Let's do a full offset under layer, full offset. And I can see everything is saying rotate that in direction, which would be great by itself. But right away, let's just save ourselves some time create a mask on that spline. And in that mask, we can drag in a second copy of the splines. It is coming in as a spline object. And this time it's going to come in as a radius. So we'll change that distance mode to radius. Now there's a radius there. As we increase the radius, that effect we saw is happening, but only when it's within this radius. Now keep in mind, we've got this big box showing us what the cross section of what's happening. So we kind of diluted our uh, resolution. So if we were to shrink this down to, let's say 500 by 500, just a preview, you see, we have a lot more detail of what is actually happening. And you can see how we're getting this curvature here and it's slowly fading out and going into this big attraction that's happening from the surface of the object. So it's a really nice combination of the two. And I really like separating out via using a mask, the two different splines. I Maybe, I don't know for sure, we might be able to use a long and radius. I like separating them out this way though, where you have a little bit more direct separate control and you can think of them separately, but there might be a slightly different workflow. So just inside the viewport, man, every still frame here looks really neat. Um, I don't want to currently control the display. I'll turn that off. So let's just see, continuing from this point, we've now got that new field force adding in and let's just see what that does. And what we saw is it should be traveling here around and immediately look at this, this entire top section and even a little bit here because the radius was a little bit larger is starting to twirl around there, but it's still attracted to the overall object. So now we're getting this nice twisting motion and these splines should all get pulled in and twisted and, and kind of woven together. Just really neat. Now, some of these are getting flung away a little bit. Let's make a couple changes inside of the field force, you'll notice that we're actually set this to normal. So it's completely overriding what's underneath it. So in general, these will be attracted to the surface, especially as they move away, but it's not combining the two. So if we set this to add, it should be doing both attracting to the surface and spinning around. Now, remember how we said that the circle, well, we put the circle in this connect object. The reason we did that is I can actually make a duplicate 
of this circle spline and just move it, E for move, move it over here to our other circle. And without making any other changes, that has been added to our rig. If we left those out, we'd have to start manually adding in more copy, another spline and another mask and another spline. But instead, it's already viewing this via this connect object. So there is now a second spline. Hit play, continuing from here. And let's see, this was rotating around. Now we also have the attraction because we added them together. But if we look down here, we can see these are beginning to twirl around in the exact same direction. Now, keep in mind, these two are going to fight each other a little bit where it's like there's this blending point. So there might be a lot of churn in the center. Personally, I think that's pretty cool. And you can even see some of these splines getting mixed up inside of it. And these are starting to get stretched out in this direction. So, man, like so much control. So cool to be able to, you know, I know the frame rate's not incredible here because we're using a lot of polygons and a lot of dynamics. But like that is just working so nicely. Like, I know stylistically, we can do a lot with this. Um, at any given point, if let's say we want these working a little bit more in tandem or not fighting like this, I can click on one of our circles, the second one on the bottom, and just click reverse. And like just by clicking that, I've inverted the direction and it's going to take probably a moment for these to lose their momentum. But that direction should change. And now look, you see they're starting to try and turn around. So that new force has been updated. So even that kind of thing could be keyframed if we were inclined, but now these will spin around and this becomes like a little mid suction point where everything's going, going to get pulled in and spun around and churned. Oh, so much that you can do here and so much to combine and add together. In addition, we're currently twirling these around with these splines. If we wanted to, we could just turn them off and they probably have a little bit of momentum left over because it's dynamics. Mo momentum is maintained, but as the friction happens and everything, these will slow down. Oh man, I can't believe how well this is working everywhere. But um, just to add in another cool thing is we can have this travel around the shape in any way that we want. So if we were inclined, we can grab the sketch tool or possibly the spline pen tool if we want to do this manually. And I'm going to do this very roughly, but let's just outline the basics of our shape. Do that, do that, curve this up here. Like I said, not being super accurate. Curve this in, out, over, over, and close. So there's a new spline. Feed that directly into our splines connector. Don't even change anything else. And now there's an overall shape that should be trying to feed through this entire system. And let's let that calculate just for a moment. And keep in mind, it does have a, it does same, it does have that same radius fall off. But now we can start seeing that this entire shape is beginning to travel along that. Ah, the combinations are so ridiculous and so endless here. It is bonkers. And, you know, as we did, we had separated out the radius. So clicking on the field force, clicking on that. Currently, it's got a relatively large radius. So it's making everything twirl around probably within a decent radius. We could turn on the visibility here and actually see what they're doing. But, you know, if we cut this, if we grab the radius and shrink this way down, I'm going to drop it down to 10. So a fourth of what it currently is. I, I, it will probably take a while to see it. Um, actually, I'll reverse the direction. That should do it. No, no, we can't reverse that direction. We'd have to reverse this direction. Yep. Struggling a little bit because I'm letting it play, but I'm going to click invert direction. So now there's a, there's a much smaller radius on the outside. So all these inner ones are not really going to care. They're not going to be affected. They're not inside the radius. But these ones on the outside that are inside that radius of 10, those are going to start getting pulled the opposite way. And so there's, there's going to be a little bit more of a, a churn of our splines as they travel around that direction. So... Yeah, I, once again, the layering up of this stuff is absolutely insane. Now, we just arbitrarily chose to use a letter here. I curved it because everything can kind of flow around it better, but this would work perfectly well on a very hard-edged shape. Kind of anything that's got a pretty even point distribution everywhere, I think it would actually work quite nicely. We can see the outside here is churning, but the middle is calm, relatively calm here. Um, everything does affect everything else, so you know it's not nothing, but man, oh. <laughs> uh, I just love techniques like this. We kind of stumbled across how cool this was earlier today, and I just needed to immediately record a tutorial to show it. Um, and um, I don't know, unlike a lot of the other things, I think that this is pretty cool. I haven't really seen too much like this. So once again, if you make something cool, please at me. I'd love to see the result.
Now I'm trying to think if there's anything else that is kind of huge and really cool that we haven't covered. Obviously, there are so many additional things that could be tinkered with here. We are just scratching the surface of the combination of different things that could be applied and blended and uh, the materials and, you know, create curvatures here and shadows and the, change the materials based on the falls here. As I said, we could be sweeping these individual splines as they're traveling around. Um, you know, we only made two types of hairs, but we could make more. As I said, these are hairs, but they don't have to be hairs. They could be any splines. In fact, they don't have to be splines. These could be a series of spheres that are moving around the surface. These could be these hair splines traveling around and some spheres, and they're each deforming things in slightly different ways, and they'd be pushing and pulling at each other. Um, the this surface is being generated but you can imagine we could create a flat plane here with a bunch of subdivisions and as these are flowing around this shape we could make it sort of appear on a completely unrelated object on the surface so you know we'd be implying this text without you know making it quite so blatant as it is here Oh, uh, man, they like the stuff could blob together. I mean, even these shapes as they're updating, these are inside of a volume builder, but you could imagine that this shape could slowly blob into another shape as one letter crashes into another. It could be a spherical blob as they slowly spread out and all of the mesh is based off whatever is currently here. So that would just automatically update and the flow of these traveling around would just continue and... Man, it's just, it is so much fun. I hope you have as much fun playing around with this and making weird, neat things. I know I did the most basic integration of this just on a simple letter, but the point is, is that it's not limited to this. And I think this is like the most universally applicable version of it. Let's save this scene file. E. One more little idea here, if this isn't crazy enough for like the openness and the possibilities, is... Currently, we're just running all of this directly via a couple of plane deformers, which is excellent. It's working really well. I'm quite pleased with that. But if we were to, let's clean this up a little bit just for the sake of it. If we were to make this editable, I'm going to say make this deformer editable, which is, you know, can be dangerous in some cases, but we can always undo. Which one of these is actually doing the deformation? Short hair. We're not using the short hairs, but you know what? I think I kind of want to see the short hairs. Actually, we, um, we'll do the long hairs, but I'm going to make, uh, I'm deleting a bunch out. Let's make the long hairs short because it's just kind of the rig we currently have set up. So the long hairs will become really short, no segments, and we'll make a thousand of them. So there's a lot. Rewind all the way, regrow. They're all in the back there and this has been made editable so if we hit play i think everything should run pretty well and we should see these start traveling and yeah you're gonna get all these little dots traveling so instantly see it's kind of like we it's the same as we'd see with some spheres but you know that's kind of a fun weird bumpy thing um their radius is maybe a little large so i'm going to shrink that actually no the margin is relatively small surprisingly but yeah we get all of those uh i guess we'll just shrink the deformation yeah because that's pretty large we'll drop that down to maybe two that's neat. Uh, three. Yeah, three. There, that's, a, that's a nice combination there. And I mean, it's running pretty quick um, here. Like the very low segments actually makes everything run very nicely. But what I wanted to actually show you here is inside of the plane deformer, now that we've made our mesh editable, we can start adding on additional effects. So in this case, let's go crazy and create a decay. I'm going to crank up the strength a little bit. And what this should now be doing is it's viewing the movement of these and it's going to be leaving, you can see it, it's leaving a trail behind them. So if this wasn't crazy enough, like we can start layering up spring, you know, springs and delays and smooths. So I'm going to crank this up even more. And this is going to start giving things a little bit more of like a flow feel where these feel like they're flowing around. Now this will start looking a lot more interesting, I think, if we turn our turbulence on. So just activating that. Everything is going to start moving now. And we're going to get these trails left behind. Now that they're moving, we probably want to make this, you know, tail not be quite as long. But now look at this feeling of a flow happening on top of everything. Now the turbulence is pretty strong. You can see how it's kind of forcing these away. So, you know, we got to go. We got to find the right balance here. Yeah, the strength is up there, so we can say, okay, calm that down. We could slow everything down a little bit. This will pull right, almost immediately back, and you can see them start moving back into the surface. And uh, they are still traveling this line around the entire surface, so those are still moving. Oh, man, it's just so much fun. And just making it editable how we can suddenly change the 
the, the effect of this by layering them up by things like this. So we could add, oh man, so many kind of little ripples and whatnot. Uh, like, I don't know, this one's starting to look kind of delicious here, kind of a golden chocolate. But I think actually at this point, I have kind of covered all the different ones I wanted to. It's weird and neat and a lot of potential. I think I say this every time, but this one was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you have as much fun playing with this one and creating things from it as I did. One more time, if you make something neat, please at me on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you happen to put it, because I would love to see what ends up coming out of this. Now, if you find this super useful, it's something that you can pitch to a client. If you end up using it in some sort of project, I do have a Patreon set up. If you want to support me because this helped you out, it'd be super appreciated. But of course, it is not necessary. These tutorials and my Rocket Lasso live stream are free for everybody, and I'm going to keep it that way. Now, when it comes to the Patreon, you do get access to bonus streams and the scene files that I've been saving as I go on this, as well as the scene files of a bunch of bonus live streams that happen. In fact, I have the regular stream on Wednesdays, but now I have a bonus live stream on Tuesdays where I record, figure out and record tutorials. And then the Thursday one, which is just explore a deeper exploration of some of the things we've been recently doing. So if you want to support, it's appreciated. But otherwise, uh, I'll see you in the next live stream or the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.